Hey everyone, my name's Josiah. I'm part of Central Campus. Uh, I very recently graduated at Audacious College first year, and I've been asked to uh, bring you the devotional for today. Uh, it's going to be from 2 Samuel 6, 14 to 22, so I'm going to read from the NIV translation. I'm going to jump around a little bit in the verse because there's some stuff in there that uh, is not applicable to this devotional today, but here goes. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might while he and all Israel were bringing up the Ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpets. As the Ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought, they brought the Ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. Now we're going to jump to uh, verse 20. When David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. Now this verse gives us a really clear picture of David's heart and how he positions himself to bring about honor and worship to God. Now, just quickly put this verse into context. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, David has grabbed 30,000 men a little bit before he's taken 30,000 men to grab the Ark of the Covenant from where he was staying. But on the journey back, Uzzah, who's one of the people that's around the Ark at the time, puts his hand on the Ark because the oxen stumbles and he's like he reaches out, puts his hand on the Ark, and unfortunately he dies. The anger of the Lord is against him and he, he passes away. And David goes, oh no, I, I don't want this ark anymore. And he leaves it in a place um, between Jerusalem and Bala. Um, but he then goes back to Jerusalem and then finds out a little bit later that the place that the ark is blessed has a uh, his place, sorry, is blessed. The Lord is blessing the household of the, uh, the 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 place where the ark is stored. And David goes, I was wrong. I need the ark in Jerusalem. So he goes out with his people again and brings the ark to Jerusalem. Now, I, I absolutely love verses 14 to 22 because it really demonstrates to us the position that we need to hold our own hearts when it comes to worship. King David is the king of Israel, but He's wearing a linen ephod, so he stripped himself of all of his finery, all his regal garments, all the rings, all the gold, all the silver that he's wearing on him, and even his status, he's stripped from himself. And he's simply coming as a man to worship before the Lord. Better yet, he's doing it with all of his might and with not a care for what other people think. Now, what does this mean for us? Firstly, we're all called to worship, be that the famous or the faceless, we are all called to worship before the Lord. That is what we are made for. That is what is in our lifeblood. That's in our DNA. That's what we're called to do. And when we worship, we come alive. Number two, we should leave our material possessions and status when we come to worship and praise. It doesn't matter what shirt you're wearing, what job you have, when you're coming into the presence of God. We should leave that all behind and simply come as we are as men and women to worship before the King of all kings. Finally, we really shouldn't care how undignified we look. Our worship and praise is not for those around us, not even for ourselves, it's for God. Now I'll leave you with this thought. How often do we all hold back in our praise and worship because we're wor worried about the opinions of others? Now I say this, and this is like where my heart place is. If you can't sing or you can, sing your heart out. If you can't dance or you can, dance your heart out. For the Lord is worthy and the opinions of others don't matter. Let us become in this generation even more undignified than David was in his. So right now, I just, I'd just i love to be able to pray for you all. So Lord, I just want to thank you for all the people that are going to uh, come for this devotional. And I just pray right now that you would speak into their lives. But more importantly, I just pray that you would fill them with courage when it comes to worship. That they would let loose. They would 
worship with all abandon. They would just be in your presence, Lord, and that would be the only thing that matters in that moment, not the people around them. So, Lord, I just pray courage into all these people that are going to witness this uh, devotional today. In the name of Jesus, amen.